Hallo und willkommen zu The Heart of Magnus. Ich bin Mark. Und. This is the Heart of Magnus Led Zeppelin Podcast. How's it going? <clears throat> I started with that Robert Plant snippet because that's just about all there is of that song on the recording. The guy got there late. His notes were really. He was pulling on Mike Millard. Um. So he missed the first two songs, and he just got the tail end, tail, tail end of 29 Palms. And I love that part when I saw it live on this tour. It was beautiful when I saw Robert do the song on David Letterman that year. It was great when it just breaks down into that. Just got into town today. Find my girl has gone away. She took my heart. She took my keys. I'm in my old two blue dungarees and I'll never go to Texas anymore. Whore. Whore. I don't know if he's saying whore. Uh, so yeah, I like that. I wanted to share that with you. Figured it would be a decent way to open. And then I also figured, well, of the thousands of people who listen every week, and that number is fucking crazy. Um, there's going to be a significant portion who are going to hear that and go, what, 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 what? And then look at their thing and see what happened. And by the time they figured out it was supposed to sound like that, they missed it. So, Mazel Tov. <laughs> All right. Howdy. <clears throat> I almost bailed this week. Because I am just tired. I was tired. Same reason as last week, just more so. Uh, the laboratory that I work for uh, in Wuhan, nice place. Had an oopsie a few years ago, but we tightened up. Um, <laughs> it's an asbestos testing laboratory, actually. Uh, was bought out by a giant multinational company that I can't tell you the name of until Apple after April 26th when you're not going to care because you wouldn't have heard of them anyways. Anyway, giant company bought our tiny lab, which is great, but a whole bunch of stuff has to happen. And basically it's the lab director. Well, not even the lab. Oh well, yeah. The lab director, de facto lab director, uh, and myself doing all the heavy lifting which is fine and great and wonderful. It's just a lot of work for a short period of time. But Marky's tired. I'm not a driven man. You know this. And I've had to, and I've had to drive. <laughs> so lots and lots of meetings. Oh, Jesus Christ. How do you corporate people do it? Meetings and meetings and meetings. Okay, let's all just take a moment and uh, say who we are and where we work. And uh... Oh, Mark, you're still muted. Oh, sorry. Yes, I agree. <sighs> it's fine. Everything's fine. It is all fine, but it resulted in me being very sleepy. I was looking forward to this weekend of like, whew, I don't have my daughter this weekend. I am going to do nothing this weekend but get high, play video games, read, don't do anything. Anything that in any way improves my life or the the life of society or the planet? No. This weekend is rest and relaxation. But then I realized that I, I mixed up weekends and that this weekend I'm actually gone. <laughs> Going to a friend's, uh, my best friend's, dearest friend's um, birthday party this weekend. So I'm leaving tomorrow night and I won't be back until Sunday night. Just in time to go to bed and go to work on Monday. Um which is going to drive me fucking bonkers. But I'll figure out a way. I'm an odd duck. I need <laughs> I need alone time to recharge. And it took me a long time to realize that that's what it was and then to actually just have the balls to be like, nah, man, I can't. Nope, 
can't do it. What am I going to do? I'm going to sit at home. I'm going to sit with my cat. I'm going to play video games. I'm going to smoke weed. Or I'm going to watch YouTube. It's good for my noggin, man. All right. They're like, great. What the fuck are we listening to this week, Mark? We've kind of got that it's Robert Plant. No thanks to you. But uh, the rest you're going to have to, you know, divulge. All right. Then consider it divulged. November. Oh, boy. The naming conventions on this recording are... um, All right, what am I looking at? Wow, it doesn't even say in the notes, does it? Shit. November 3rd. I think. November 3rd, 1993. Airy Crown Theater, Chicago, Illinois. Chicago. Blues town. Electric blues town. Very cool town. Uh, I've, the only time I've spent in it has been when I've flown in through it, when I've flown through it, or I've driven through it. But any time I... The, the, the few times... Oh, there's been a few times I've driven across country, done the Oregon to uh, New Hampshire and New Hampshire to Oregon drive. And uh, every time I went through Chicago, I'd turn the radio on and listen to fucking blues. Man. All right. Here's what we're going to... Well, actually, no. Let's get down to it. This is Airy Crown Theater, November 3rd. Oh, he did put it in there. I'm sorry, man. I was a dick. I was just stupid. November 3rd, 1993, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, As said before, the taper gentleman uh, was running a little late and then had a hard time finding the place, etc., etc. The way shit happens. When you're like, oh, we got to hurry. So here is uh, the set list of the recording that you'll be able to get for free. Like, I got this for free. This guy taped it for us. Hi, Kit Kat. There's a kitty in here with me. Her name's Kit Kat because I didn't name her. I would have given her a cool name. But as my daughter says, she's a kitten cat because she is. She's like six pounds. She's just a small, framed, little tiny kitty. The big mouth. Hi, baby. (coughs) Nothing. All right. Well, I'm busy. Sorry. Uh, Heartofmarkness.com is where you can get this show for free. That's the whole way this taping thing works. Tape trading. It's free. I know. Shush. Probably a lot in the background. There's my window fan in the background and the kitty cat saying meow. Hello, kitty. And I'm, I am a little stoned. Because as I said, I was going to bail on tonight, but I didn't. So I'm higher than I usually am. So we'll be fine. It's not going to be a crazy one. I'm not that high yet. But it'll be a (coughs) a spacey one like it is now. All right, here is the set list for the show. This is not the set list. Well, I'll read it to you. Opens with Tall Cool One, which is missing because uh, the notes are... We are probably running through the car park, which is funny. Song two, Ramble On, Missing. Entered a bigger building where the RE crown is contained, saying, Where the fuck is this place? <clears throat> then we're on to 29 Palms, finally in setup. And then, from here on out, complete songs. Heaven knows, thank you, if I were a carpenter. That one, yeah. If I were a carpenter, you were a lady. Oh, he did that on um, Fate of Nations. I always associate that with um, Mighty Rearranger. Oh, Buckley's. Okay. Uh, If I were a carpenter, going to California, in the mood, including Testify My Love, For What It's Worth, Season of the Witch. That was a good one. We're going to hear that one. What Is and What Should Never Be, In My Time of Dying, Hurting Kind, then Sweet Home Chicago, uh, blues medley with, and here's why I downloaded this show, and here's why I did the show tonight, James Cotton on harmonica. James Cotton, legendary harp player. So good, blues. Started off in the 50s with Howlin' Wolf on chess records. Um, played with everybody. Everybody. Um, I think that might be Little Walter... My babe? No, I'm, I'm getting everything mixed up. Uh, James Cotton, real good harp player. Really, really, really good harp player. And the blues. So I look forward to that. So, all right. That first one, the 29 Palms snippet, doesn't count. I'm too good to you. 
So let's jump right into... You know what? Fuck it. Let's listen to Heaven Knows. That's a cool tune. Right on. Heaven Knows, ladies and gentlemen. November 3rd, 1993. 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Jesus.
Ladies and gentlemen, the cure. I <laughs> I thought that would pick up. In my memory, it picks up and starts rocking at the at the guitar solo and then goes into the normal one. I must have misremembered it. It's still cool. It just it wasn't what I was it wasn't the plate I was expecting to serve. So I hope you liked it. There's some uh, clipping in the middle section. I couldn't do anything with it. I'm not tremendously adept. I have I only have audacity, <clears throat> not Adobe Premiere, uh, and their click repair, not click repair, clip repair uh, tool didn't really impress me that much, and it cranked the volume down a ton. Which I understand. It has to make, you know, the headroom has to be there for the waveform to complete, yo. But, uh, so yeah, sorry about that. And also, sorry for people that fucking talk. Um, <laughs> as I was listening to the, the, the person talking, you know, super misogynistic, and I'm like, what are you doing? It's not because she's a woman she's talking. She's talking because she's, you know, either hopefully unaware still rude and if she was aware then you know she's just an asshole I doubt that was the case but in that moment I'm like bitch shut up so a little self work there people talk I'm gonna be I'm, I have to be mindful of that oh, here we go Deep confession time. No, I was never an asshole like that at a show, I don't think. But hey, if you're oblivious to it, you don't even know, right? All right, let's just plow on ahead here. I don't want to waste any more of your time with my stoned wool gathering. Let's move on. You know what? You deserve something cool. Let's go into the guaranteed cool in the mood medley. And I mean, I think it's genius of him to use in the mood as the... as the medley song uh he has a couple in there but um it's smooth it really worked out i love this tour this is the fate of nations tour for the fate of nations album the album with 29 palms on it that was the big big hit and also if i were a carpenter which was a minor hit and i think that was it as far as hitting i don't know great album Great album, great album, great album, great album. I feel like with that album, Robert 100% hit his stride as a solo artist. Not that he didn't have hits before, not that he wasn't great before, but everybody from the 70s and 60s was awkward as fuck in the 80s because the shit they had to wear and the hair, you know, the parachute pants and stuff, it's not someone had to tell them that's what they had to wear. They weren't like, hey, I can't wait to wear my fucking big puffy synthetic pants. <laughs> I mean, I wore the same shit too. It was just, it was the style at the time. But um, I think after going out on his own uh, as a solo artist, having those first two albums, you know, uh, Principal Moments was a huge fucking enormous hit. Uh, and then he dipped with Shaken and Stirred, where he tried to go his own way and went a little too far for the time. And then his uh, Holy Shit, I Need to Be Famous Again, I'm Turning 40, Do I Still Have It? albums, Now in Zen and uh, the other one, Manic Nirvana. And then he, I think he got comfortable in his own skin, got another band together. And this one had Michael Lee and Charlie Jones, which became the, the rhythm section for the Page Plant Band, and recorded a banger of an album. And he did, uh, in addition to the songs on that banger of an album, there's a bunch of great B-sides. Hey Jane is one of them. I love that, I love that song. Watery Bint, Oompa. Uh, fun shit. And the tour was just crazy good. I think he had three guitarists. And it was it was rock and roll. It was fun. It wasn't derivative. It wasn't hack. You know, the Zeppelin stuff killed. It wasn't the Zeppelin stuff with the synthesizers and the 80s sound and the sampling and the lighting up. You know, it, it was 
played organically <laughs> and so much fucking fun. All right, I am talking forever again, but I'm giving the background on the tour. This is context, people. Um, and this, so I think he found his, you know, Robert got his groove back all the way, in my opinion, on this tour and with this album. This is also the year that Jimmy went out to show that he still had it, but instead of getting his groove back, he got a 20-year-old girlfriend and a Corvette with the Coverdale Page project, which had his best playing Poe Zeppelin by far, but unfortunately he was singing with a fucking apples and oranges. I'll say that. So, think of it as, as divorcees. Robert's finally over him. In his stride. You know how that works when you break up and you're and you finally get your shit together and you're not thinking about him. And you're finally, and you're fucking done with him. That's when you run into him at the store. That's when they reach out with like, hey. Or, or that's when they're back in your life. <laughs> it's like they can tell. And probably on some psychic level there is some kind of shift that you pick up on but so Robert he's finally done he's found his stride he's at his strength he's in his prime and he is forging ahead with great great stuff that he has done independently all by his lonesome he don't need no man um, and then there's Jimmy who's kind of uh, you know the, the, the middle aged divorced man yeah such as myself <laughs> you know he's eating cereal out of a plastic uh, yogurt container that he uses as a bowl standing over the sink in his underwear uh, but then he started to get his shit together and he's dating somebody some floozy some whore but then <gasps> they have a relationship oh he put out an album oh he has a new band with her so you know, they meet up for, uh, actually they met up at the show that I saw them, that I saw Robert at in, in Boston. I've told the story a hundred times. I think I even told it last week. But yeah, Jimmy went to that show because, uh, you know, they're in town. I don't know. And they brought up, and that's where the germ of the Page Plant reunion came. Uh, they were going to do, Robert was going to do an Unplugged for MTV and he wanted to get Jimmy. And of course, MTV wanted him to get Jimmy. So they went back, and because they were both in that whole, like, hmm, I can't let them be happy, they got back together. The brief reconciliation, you know? Give it another try. Eh, it didn't work out. But they can part more on better terms. Analogy over, metaphor concluded. Let's listen to a fucking song. Here we go. Whatever it was I said it was going to be a hundred years ago before I said I'd talk for a hundred years. Wouldn't talk, but I did. Here you go, in the mood.
was great that was great that was like a musical uh version of where am i recording oh i'm recording at the end of the robert plant song all right different track it'll work that was amazing that was amazing and that that high note that shriek he had he had that back he had been working on his voice he had stopped smoking around this time um i don't think it lasted i don't think that was the his final battle with it but he wasn't smoking if i recall from the spin magazine article i read 30 years ago um and he was he he had learned how and was learning how to take care of his voice better like professionally what do I do and he was doing vocal exercises he would walk around with a chromatic tuner and just do vocal exercises to hold the notes and semitones you know he's always been into the Arabic music and that has semitones which means you know between uh, C and C sharp in our scale there may be four notes between them in that scale Uh, so real subtle stuff and yeah he was at the on top of his game it was so good hope you liked it i've got one more for you uh, but before that the spiel you can find me wherever you found me plus anywhere else podcast wise i'm on uh, everything oh now is the time every week where i go oh i should put myself on amazon it's the only place i'm not uh, where i'm not and i'll forget as i do but you already found me on podcast, but I'm anywhere else on podcast. Android, Apple, Stitcher, Witcher, Bitcher. I'm there, baby. I also have, am on YouTube, even though I haven't done that since the 200th episode. Oh, this is episode 211, I think, of the Heart of Martins podcast. Uh, but they copyright struck my 200th episode, so... <laughs> I said, screw you guys, I'm going home. And I went home. I should get back to doing it, because it's not like I'm hurting YouTube. <laughs> but I'm not like, where's Mark? All right. <clears throat> yes, YouTube. Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter. I'd love it if you followed me on Twitter. That would be great. I'll follow you. You know, as long as you don't have, you know, swastikas or overt porn, I will uh, follow you. Back, I mean. Not like, woohoo. <laughs> but just... If you follow me, I'll follow you, right? Um, Facebook, there's a Facebook group with a couple hundred really cool people um, with the Led Zeppelin penchant, um, as well as all kinds of other classic rock. Good people, if you want a place to hang out, or just go, hey guys, what about this, or what is this, or where can I find this, or have you seen this? Look at this. What is this? (laughs) You can go there. Uh, The aforementioned heartofmarkness.com is a website I have, just a easy peasy blog where I dump the podcast every week along with the link to the show itself. So that set list I read earlier, you can download this the whole show, except for the two tracks the guys missed because they weren't there uh, for free and own it and uh, I don't know, do whatever you do with it, man. Your house, your place, your castle. What else? Ah, yes, and all of this is courtesy of my beloved patrons, the titans upon whose shoulders rest this humble yet mighty podcast. If you want to be one or look into being one, you can go to patreon.com slash heartofmarkness, or when you're at heartofmarkness.com getting those shows, you can click the patron button, Patreon button, and it'll take you there. 
either way, whatever. It's a free podcast. You're welcome to listen. I enjoy that. What you can do, um, that's free, is leave a review. Even if you're saying this guy's a fucking weirdo and I don't know what he's saying and he talks for an hour, plays a five-minute song, I hate him. Playing, you know, don't, don't do that. Say you love me and that you worship me. Um, on whatever podcast platform you're listening to, Apple, you know, any of them, if there's a place to leave a review, I would love it if you leave a review. It helps. I mean, it legitimately helps people who are searching for, like Led Zeppelin Podcast, to find me. Yay. Thank you. And lastly, before we get to the last song of the night, the actual names of the current Titans Upon Whose Shoulders Rest the Humble Yamani Podcast. <gasps> a Laurel and Hardy handshake go out to Keith and Tilda, Brian, Matt, Steve, Big Ed, Kenny, John from West Footscray, Picard, Knegarn, Rob from Melbourne, Australia, Wayne, Brad, Dan, Yell, Other, David, Bonzo Billy, and Mimo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, friends. You pay for Earthen. You pay for the SoundCloud where I drop the podcast. You pay for the mega cloud storage where I pick, keep the shows that I share with y'all. They pay for the website hosting. They pay for the WordPress blog hosting thingy. And they even paid for the microphone through which I'm speaking to you. So I don't have to talk through my stupid laptop mic or the shitty ass XLR to USB connector mic I had from an old band mic back in the day. <clears throat> Boy, we've come a long way, baby. Not far enough. Fair enough. All right. <clears throat> Last song of the night before I pack it in, because this shit's getting hard to do, folks. Sweet Home Chicago Blues Medley with James Cotton on harmonica. And, oh, this is going to be fun. First of all, Sweet Home Chicago is a great song in and of itself. Second of all, as you've already heard, Robert Plant is in both great voice and great spirits. And, third of all, his band is fucking tight. Fourth of all, James Cotton is sitting in. Fuck. Let's listen. You're going to have to bring him up in the monitors. Way up in the monitors. Let's have that harmonica way loud. Let's hear it way loud. Way loud. Way loud. Way loud.
Holy shit. That, <clears throat> that was a very happy Mr. Robert Plant. That was great. That was great. Um, it wasn't Sweet Home Chicago that was the sandwich, the bread for the medley sandwich. It was Gambler's Blues. I recognize that song. Um, I can't remember who did it originally. Maybe P.P. King, but I don't think so. Uh, in any case, um, back in April of 1988, Jimmy Page jammed with Robert Plant and his uh, Now and Zen band on this song. And uh, Jimmy played amazingly, Robert sang amazingly, but that band couldn't... None of them were blues-based. So it was stiff and awkward. It would be like if... Um, Depeche Mode <laughs> had to play a slow blues. Um, you know, musically competent for sure, but it's not what that's for. Uh, but I recognize the song, and I actually got to hear some more of the lyrics on this version because that uh, 88 version um, is not quite as, uh, the clarity is not really there. Um, James Cotton, that was amazing. Robert bringing out some really cool old blues tunes. Sweet Home Chicago, of course, was in it, and people sang along with it. What are you going to do? Great song, and he's in Chicago. Um, I can't remember any of the blues tunes he did, other than the Gambler's Blues. Sorry, and I didn't recognize all of it. But, <clears throat> what a voice. What a harp player, James Cotton. That was magical. Thank you, Robert. And thank you, whoever taped this. Thank you so much. Let me look at the notes, see if there's a name. Because we all got to experience that. Not just the folks who were there. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have it. Um, but whoever did, first of all, really great capture. And second of all, really great show. And it lives on forever, even though it wasn't professionally recorded or released. It's there, because somebody grabbed it 
and shared it with the world. It's fucking magic. All right. I'm going to bounce because <clears throat> I am. <laughs> I'm very high. Not super duper high, but high enough that I got to quit this because this is pr profoundly difficult. And I got to eat some fucking dinner. I'm going to kill everybody on Earth. So be good to yourselves and each other. And I'll be back next Thursday for more Zeppelin. Bye-bye.